These are 38 Attack on Titan moments that got changed to the anime. And at number one, we have this moment with Zeke. When Zeke was heavily injured after he himself detonated the explosive that Levi put around him, Ymir fixed his body and allowed him to return to full health. When that happens in the manga, the panel we get is basically from his waist and up. Well, Mappa felt the need to animate some cheeks for some reason and included Zeke's entire naked body in the scene. But this is just one of the many small changes I will cover in this video. And I'm just getting started because each change will be even crazier than the previous. As we mentioned in past videos, Hajime Isayama is a huge fan of both Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones. As a result, many characters from these two iconic series were included in the Attack on Titan manga as mindless titans. Here, for example, is Saul Goodman in Titan form. Although Saul Goodman was part of both the anime and the manga, this was not the case for everyone else. Other characters like Tyrion Lannister, Marjorie Tyrell, Littlefinger, Lord Varys, Missandei, and Grey Worm, as well as Arya Stark, that were part of the Attack on Titan manga as mindless titans, were not actually included in the anime. And next, let's talk about Sasha's involvement in the series and how it was completely different compared to the manga. In the manga, she was just a side character with not much screen time at all. However, as the show and the story progressed, Sasha became one of the fan favorites, which led the producers to include more scenes of her in the story. Fun fact, because Sasha was not that important in the story, she was supposed to die much sooner than she did in the actual story. She was meant to die protecting Kaya. However, Isayama's editor could not get himself to accept that, so he convinced Isayama to let her live. Some reports claimed that the editor even cried when Sasha was about to die from the hands of that titan. So, Isayama, being such a generous person, he allowed her to live. And, yeah, he killed her a few chapters later anyway. <laughs> But when it comes to the chronological order which the events of Attack on Titan are shown to us, there are two main changes from the manga. The first one being that in the anime, the training camp events are shown in chronological order, in the sense that our protagonists show up, join the training camp, graduate, and then the story continues. However, in the manga, the training camp events are shown through flashbacks. The other time something similar happened was with Ymir's backstory, as in the anime, this was shown much sooner compared to the manga. Her backstory is revealed in chapter 89 of the manga, while in the anime, we get glances of her flashback while still being shown events of chapter 47 or so. Even though that was pretty cool, I was even more excited to notice these changes in Eren's and Annie's fight, where I found two more differences between the anime and the manga. The first one being that in the anime, Eren features a berserk mode, which was probably just an addition of special effects to make the fight sequence more epic. Despite fans theorizing this might have been a secret form of Eren, in the end, this was just added for better visuals, as this form never appeared in the manga. But you see, the berserk mode did not just cause changes in the way we witnessed the fight, because as it turns out, the outcome actually changed as well. You see, in the anime, Eren basically has the upper hand during his berserk mode. However, in the manga, Eren never had such an advantage or difference in power, as they are seen fighting on equal ground. But that's not even half as bad as this detail revolving around the Titans' choice to wear clothes. You see, when it comes to Titans, as we know, they have no reproductive organs, and hence them being shown naked does not really have an impact in the story. But I guess someone needs to tell this to the people in charge of the Malaysian manga. You see, the hilarious part about the Malaysian manga is that they redrew the Titans in order to portray them wearing clothes. What? I mean, check these panels from the Armored and Colossal Titans. Okay, so you wanted to make the Titans wear clothes. Fair enough. But I do have one very important question here. Who made these pants for the Titans? Is there any special shop creating them? And if so, how much would they cost? You know, asking the important questions here. But this detail is an even smaller hidden change I found between the two versions. When Eren and Zeke see Grisha's memories, Eren acts tough and without emotion. However, as soon as Zeke is not looking, Eren looks back and watches his family in pain. This stare was even more obvious and emotional in the manga as we get a close-up shot of his eyes that are filled with sadness. While many times manga scenes are removed in the anime, other times some anime original scenes are added. An excellent example was the following scenes. At some point, we see Gabby realizing that Marley was lying to both her and every other Eldian and Marley, as they kept telling them that Paradise is nothing but devils. During this scene, we can see a cage on the floor with a door open, symbolizing that Gabby finally broke free of her cage and realized that she was brainwashed by Marley. This scene was not present in the manga at all. Now, let's bring it up a notch. Did you know that Mikasa's behavior is different in the manga? That's because in the manga, Mikasa interacts normally with pretty much everyone around her, while in the anime, she's basically clinging onto Armin and mostly Eren all the time. I mean, 99% of her lines are A similar pattern emerges with Armin as well. In the anime, Armin is way too submissive, while in the manga, he's more dynamic and decisive, especially in the early version of the story. Next, let's talk about the time Eren transformed for the first time into the Attack Titan. When everything was over, Mikasa and Armin headed towards his side first to tend to their friend. However, there's a small difference between the two versions. In the manga, Armin is the one to actually pull Eren out of the Titan's body, while in the anime, Mikasa is the one to do it. This was done in order to strengthen the bond between Eren and Mikasa. 
even though that's pretty crazy. I was even more shocked when I discovered this next change regarding Levi and Historia. When Historia is struggling to decide whether to become queen, Levi plays a big role in her decision. In the manga, he's a whole lot harsher with her. He doesn't just tell her that she needs to make a quick decision. He yells at her, threatens her, and chokes her. In the anime, however, his methods were toned down quite a bit. This makes her reason for hitting him once she actually becomes queen a lot clearer. Now, let's move to season four, where we see Falco's dream in which he is flying. However, this dream sequence does doesn't appear in the manga. It was added by Mappa after Isayama's request. Speaking of things added just in the anime, during the very first moments of Attack on Titan, Eren wakes up from his dream after having witnessed many future glances of events yet to come in the series. However, these glances were not part of the manga and were again requested by Isayama. Yeah, that was kind of crazy, but so was the next change. Without the ODM gear, fighting the Titans would have been completely impossible. You'd think that considering their importance, their inventor would have at least gotten a nod of acknowledgement. The anime doesn't give the poor guy his credits, but the manga does. The credit belongs to a weaponsmith named Angel Altonen. He appears briefly in the manga and stars in a light novel called Shingeki no Kyojin before the fall. But the anime producers did not just stop there, because they kept changing the manga material by adding their own scenes. One of the most memorable scenes from the beginning of the anime is the pomegranate scene. This is an anime-only scene that centers around Mikasa's reaction to what she perceives as Eren's demise. There's been a lot of debate about what the pomegranate is supposed to symbolize, though most people think that it's a sign of rebirth. The pomegranate was not present in the manga. On to the creepiest change so far. When Annie is exposed as a titan shifter, there's a difference that lies in her laugh. That's because in the anime, she displays more joy rather than anything else. In the manga, on the other hand, her facial expression is a much creepier smile. Speaking of creepy or even annoying characters in the series, in the anime, one of the most annoying groups of characters were the religious fanatics, mainly to their big number. However, in the manga, their number was much less than in the anime. Season 4, Part 2. First part was a work of art. It was perfect. But Mappa did change many things from the source material. That's because in the anime, we see Eren's grandparents in their cell. This scene was anime original, as again, there was no such panel in the manga. But at the same time, Mappa did skip other iconic scenes. For example, they skipped the panel where people are offering a child as a sacrifice in their last effort to save themselves. God, that was creepy. Another panel that was skipped is this one, where thousands, if not millions of people, are seen falling from the edge of the cliff. Yeah, that might have been even worse. Finally, this panel, where people are basically praying in the presence of the Colossal Titans, was also not included in the anime. On to Armin and Annie having a romantic time while millions of people are dying, screaming in the hands of Eren. In the manga, Armin grabs Annie's hand by the wrist, while in the anime, Armin grabs her by the palm, showing a closer connection between the two. But let's move back a bit during the time when Eren was a prisoner of Paradise. When Eren grabbed Hanji and asked her if she had any better ideas, the Titan Sparks were seen for a second, which again was a nice addition by Mappa, since this detail was not part of the manga. I had already read the manga, and I gotta admit that this scene almost gave me a heart attack. On to some changes that really annoyed every Eren and Mikasa shipper. When Eren and Mikasa are on the ship to visit Marley, in the manga, they are very close to each other, while in the anime, they are portrayed with a gap between them. It seems to me that Mappa does not like the Eren and Mikasa ships, because when Eren asks Mikasa what I am to you, in the manga, Eren is very close to Mikasa, while in the anime, Eren and Mikasa have a different position, while also having bigger space between them. Finally, during the moments the scouts are drinking together in Marley, in the manga, Eren and Mikasa share the same cup to drink, while in the anime, Mikasa and Eren have separate cups. This might not be the biggest change, but believe me, many manga readers were looking forward to that moment. Moving on to Hanji, aka the hottest star of the show, if you know what I mean. In the anime, Hanji Zoe is clearly female. However, in the manga, things are not that clear, as her sex and gender are not specified. When asked about it, Hajime Isayama replied that it's up to the reader to decide, and either way, he's fine with it. From one commander to the next. When it comes to Commander Irwin, we actually found two important changes. The first one being the way he is shown with his severed arm. In the anime, his clothes do not allow for his cut arm to be fully shown. But in the manga, there are several panels that display Irwin with his arm cut off. The second one being that in the anime, Irwin is displayed played as a strict commander who doesn't have any time for romance in his life. Although the same can be said for the manga, there was one time that Isayama's story does point towards a hint of a former love. In a conversation with the military police commander Niall Dock, it is revealed that both Niall and Erwin liked a woman called Marie. But knowing that Erwin couldn't offer her stability with his own violently turbulent mission, Erwin backed out, and Niall ended up marrying her. It is a minor yet interesting detail from Erwin's past, which adds to the tragic nature of his character. When it comes to censoring brutal or graphic scenes, Attack on Titan 
Titan features plenty of those. And from here on, we're gonna present some of them. For those not enjoying gory scenes, don't worry. We'll mention the scenes while not displaying any material that might give you nightmares. Since we previously mentioned Hanji Zoe, let's start with her. Did you know that the torture she enforces on Sans were much worse in the manga? In the anime, while Hanji Zoe is basically cutting his fingers, the camera shows us the door of the basement while we hear his screams. <laughs> In the manga, however, Hanji basically cuts his fingers, puts them on a plate, and then displays them to him. I don't know about you, but I believe Sans probably did not enjoy his time with Hanji. But when it comes to censoring tortures, another scene deserves a mention. In the anime, although some fans may understand what Zackley's torture device did, it was not explicitly neither explained or showed. But in the manga, it was pretty clear what the victim had to go through. Again, we're not showing what it is, because some people might find that disturbing. But if you want to find out, I'm sure some viewers would be more than glad to explain what that was in the comments down below. But you see, these two instances of censoring tortures were not the only ones. During Grisha's tortures in Marley, his limbs are not shown, but in the manga, the panel in which his toes are being cut off one by one is clearly visible. When it comes to the death of Eren's mother Carla in the hands of the Smiling Titan, her death is obviously very graphic in the anime. But when you compare it with the manga, then that's where you understand that they actually censor this panel a lot. The same pattern with the same culprit appears in Hans's death, although Hans's death in the anime is pretty brutal as is. Believe me, you don't want to see how his death is drawn in the manga. On to the declaration of war, in which Eren storms out of his hiding spot and eats Willy Tiber. In the anime, Eren throws him in the air and then eats him. In the manga, however, this scene was much more gruesome, as Eren splits Willy Tiber in half during the impact. Check on these videos to watch more Attack on Titan content. Go on, check him out!